everyone. We're working on tooth number two today. We did this root canal tooth number three over a year ago and it's doing perfectly. Today we're working on tooth number two, irreversible pulpitis. Infiltration with lidocaine, two percent, one to one hundred thousand epi. And I always give a palatal infiltration as well. Always. I rather patients suffer for for a few seconds versus them feeling the rubber dam clamp and everything else. Okay, so that could wake her up. Gloves, we use hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizer with our gloves, all of us, so we're good to go. So the next thing we do is we use isopropyl alcohol, 70% isopropyl to sterilize, to sterilize the tooth. So. So that's isopropyl, we sterilize the tooth and rubber dam clamp and rubber dam. So rub that against all the surfaces, make sure everything is sterilized nice and clean. And next I'm doing, I'm using my flare file and I'm flaring the coronal to middle two-thirds of the of the root canal and as you can see how easy this is I'm not ledging I'm not perforating remember the instrument is just a tool it doesn't do it doesn't ledge it doesn't perforate it's the operator so here we go my number 20 flare file That's the flare file, number 20 flare. And I already, I'm already 60% done with my instrumentation and shaping, just with the flare file. Very easy, that's it. Now what I'm gonna do is, as I described this morning, I used the blue needle to remove the bulk, the, all the bits and pieces of the pulp tissue. I finished, I finished one 12 cc syringe of full strength hypochlorite. Just flushed out all the bits and pieces of the pulp tissue that was in suspension uh, in, the, in the chelating agent. So it's all out. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna determine my working length with my apex locator. 20, 21 and a half, so I'm a little on the heavy handed side. So t when Dosa says 21 and a half, I'm happy with 21 because I sometimes tend to push a little bit and go a little bit beyond. So I know myself and I know that I'm a little bit on the heavy handed side. So I kind of subtract half a millimeter from what Dosa tells me usually. So that way I'm on the safe side. Okay. So. Okay. Two, I'll go with 22. So mesial buckle was uh, 21 and a half, distal buckle was 22 and a half. And now we're gonna go to palatal. Okay, palatal is 21 and a half. Looks like palatal is also 22 and a half. It's 23. Oh, 23? 23. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, let's do 21, 22, 23. All right, so now, I'm going in, because I opened up the canals, I flared the, the, two, uh, the two thirds of the, of the length of the canal now with my flare fire, stainless steel flare fire. Now I can go in with my blue hypo needle, okay? So now I can, I can go deeper. So let me have the hypo, the... Uh, I just found the MB2. 
and forget about all the garbage that you see. All the if the the mesial root is concave on the X-ray, then it's like distal. That's all BS. You need to follow the pulpal floor map, and that tells you. Like right now, my MV2, my MV2 is about a millimeter away from the orifice of the palatal, palatal canal orifice. So MV2 could be anywhere. All you need is magnification and being able to read the pulpal floor anatomy and, and map so you see where the MV2 is. Right now I'm in MV2 with an 08 C5 in a reciprocating and piece. And I'm just brushing and brushing and brushing. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to take it out, take, take the uh, C file out. I'm just going to brush it. And with this O8, I can pretty, I can, I can uh, 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 taper and open up this MB2, this really, really thin MV2 up really nicely so my next file, number 10 file, can go in easily. So as soon as I get it, I'm not gonna let I'm not letting it go. So we're gonna irrigate again. Irrigate after each file. Now my 10C file goes in so easily because I use my 08 C file to really brush this canal, brush the walls and open the canal up really well. So now my 10 goes in really easily. And now I'm gonna go in with 15. And look, goes in easy. I went to 15. Now my next file is flare, because flare itself is, the flare that I use is a 20. So why go to a 20 file when I, when I can go with my flare file, my, the tip of my flare file is 20. So now I go with my, with my flare file. So the flare file does, does two, two things. It flares and also it opens the apical area to size, to size 20. I won't push it. I won't push it. I let it go in and uh, as far as it, 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 it wants to go. I don't push it, I don't force it. Okay. It's going really easily to my length. So put one more, number 25. Okay. Thank you. It's going to length, my flare file is going to length. Easy. And I'm just brushing the walls of the MB2 canal with it. I didn't pay attention to statistics. Statistics say uh, the second molar has, on average, 40% of the time has an MB2. I don't care what the statistic tells me. I'm gonna find it, if it's there, I'll find it. I don't care about statistics, I don't care about numbers. So if it's there, I'll find it. There could be a DB2. If there is a DB2, I'll find it. If there could be a DB3, there could be an MB3. I don't care about the statistic. The purple floor map, and I, and I will find as many as many root canals as, as there are, okay? So, okay, let me have a uh, 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 so canal. My flare file didn't want to go. Okay. In the distal buckle canal, my flare file didn't want to go to length, which, which is 22 millimeters. So now I use a regular 20, K file, stainless steel K file to to establish that. I didn't want to go because of the of the taper, but now the 20 goes with ease. Now I'm gonna go with my 20 flare file. Now that my 20 stainless steel went to length, now my 20 flare should go. If my 20 flare still doesn't want to go, I won't force it. I go to 25 and then I use the flare file again. I try the flare file again. Okay. As I 
said, I didn't use, I don't use EDTA. I don't use 17% EDTA. With the microsuction, if you use the microsuction, you save up on having to use a lot of paper points because the microsuction suctions out 99% of the moisture and air again from inside of the canal. So perfect. Any liquid in the canals. Alright, so go sound ready. Now I use the paper point to deliver my sealer into, into the canal. Coat the walls of the canals with sealer. Because we we're, we do six-handed dentistry, we do six-handed endodontics, so we don't use we don't waste time. I don't get up to go get stuff or or uh, put uh, put files in. Uh, I'll do the same with my gutter percha points. Dip dip them in sealer and slowly, gently insert each one into the canal. I do. I do one or two at a time, depending on how much room I have in, in, in my pulp chamber. This is a sterile gauze that I dry my gutta percha points with or on. All right, so let's do these two. I really don't have. Okay. Done. So the girls make sure that I'm not touching any part of the patient's face. So I'm done with the operation. I put a I put a piece of sponge in the canal. I clean, of course, clean the pulpal floor with 70% isopropyl alcohol uh, on a uh, on a cotton pellet. Just a little bit more. I put the sponge in. A little bit more. And cavity is going in right now. I already already reduced the occlusion in the beginning before I uh, before I got started. So the occlusion, this tooth is out of occlusion now. This is just water to activate the cavity. Four root canal systems. We're done in 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Done. 25 minutes. Got four canals, 25 minutes.